So, to make it real, let's look at today's learner. And this is not my research, it's Prensky. Right, they crave interactivity. Unless you do that, you've lost them and they're sleeping. So anyone who is talking amongst each other needs to realize that interactivity doesn't mean sideways conversations. Right, so you have this strength, which is reading of visual images far more. Um, sad, but weaker reading skills. Um, I don't know it is because we had nothing else to do when we were younger because we'd pick up a book or we'd be outdoors, one or the other, which meant we read a lot. Visual spatial skills are strong. Let's take advantage of that. Parallel processing. Anyone have any idea what I'm talking about? Please? Nowadays, today's learner processes things in a parallel way. Anyone with ideas on what this means? Sorry, love? Lateral thinking, yes. But how many parents have teenage children here? Teenage children? Yeah. Okay. So I learned parallel processing from my teenage daughter. Because she would have a book open in front of her. She'd be sitting in front of the television. And she'd be having a conversation on the phone. And I would actually get... Shomik, by the way, this is Ambika. Shomik has taught that daughter of mine. Um, now, this child, I used to genuinely think, was missing something. And I would turn around and try to catch her, and I'd say, hey, what is it that you were reading just now? And she would tell me. All the, all the while, she was on the phone, and she would tell you what was on the TV as well. So don't think that young people can't do more than one thing at a time. They can do two things, they can do three things. So don't automatically expect the worst. Fast response time must be because of the video games they're always playing. And unfortunately, short attention span. So we're dealing with all of this in a classroom. And if we're doing it in the way that, that the World War II classroom was doing it, then obviously we aren't fulfilling our jobs. So here we are, a very heavy definition, which I would like to translate into something much simpler. Augmented reality is not virtual reality. You have reality. The reality is you sitting in front of me, all right? Now, if on that reality, I decide to superimpose something, and all I have is a camera to do it with. Okay, my, my, my phone is good enough. So I superimpose something on it. That becomes augmented reality. All right? And I'll show you how it works and how it can be really, really useful. Right. Um, do you think it's very expensive? What do you think? Yes, no. It's not. It's really not. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection and a camera, essentially. Or if you have GPS, on, uh, if you have uh, a connection on the camera, that's all you need. All right. The good thing is that students become very much in charge of their own learning. I'd gone overseas the other day to one of the GEM schools. And I'm not plugging GEMs, but this is what I saw. I was walking past a soft board, and it had this wonderful research on it. All right? And in the corner at the bottom, they had a QR code. Now, I've become very famous. I'm, I'm famous about using QR codes. And I'll show you why. I pay my chai wala 30 rupees every time I go there because I don't have cash to pay him. He has Paytm. I have Paytm. I pay him with a QR code scan. So pay, you're all very familiar with QR codes, and I'll show you. Um, they're nothing but barcodes, and they help you translate reality. Um, it's engaging, and imagine, it's not dangerous. So if you're trying to show a child the, the dangers of not wearing a safety belt, you can show it in, a, in a, an augmented reality form. And I'll show you a movie which actually um, does that. So... These are the areas in which we're actually using it in education to make it more relevant. Obviously, it's being used in advertising, but that's a whole different game. But we have AR books. 
we have AR enabled zoos and um, I've just come back uh, from overseas the other day and I went to the Pegaso museums and various other museums. I didn't need to pay for a guide. I didn't need to pay for anything because all I would do is, you know, download the app and scan and actually I could see and hear everything about what it was I was viewing. So all of these, but I don't want to talk about it. I want you to see it yourselves. It, rather than me talk you through it, it's easier you see it yourselves. Um, and for some reason, it seems to have flickered. Right. Um, frankly, I am of the generation that considered themselves very lucky if the blackboard had a good surface and the chalk didn't skid. Um, so that was what it was when I started. Um, and way before the British school, it was clearly in, um, no, this is not it. You have to go back. So let me just move on. Um, can you move on to the next slide since you can't open that one? Right. So this is, this is the AR 101. Um, you have gesture recognition on even your laptops, on your Wi-Fi. Um, have you ever played golf, the Y golf, which, hap which you stand in front of a marker and your gestures turn into actions? You need a GPS coordinate. Everybody knows GPS now. You have it on your phone and you use it all the time. And you need markers and browsers. So let me just show you how that works. Can you go to the next slide, please? Right. Now do you recognize the markers? These are the markers which you would use. And obviously, these are the things that you would print and put in whatever you can include. Um, you can include uh, a phone number like you do um, in, uh, let's say, Paytm. <laughs> you can include a website URL, which anybody passing by, if they scan with their camera, will turn into your camera going directly to the website and then you can actually view all of that. The next would obviously be, please move. Can you try putting this on now? You have to have a, something called an AR browser. Uh, if you look up uh, L-A-Y-A-R, or you look up Wikitude, there are plenty of AR browsers uh, available which you can download for free. Like I said, this is technology that is for free. Um, clearly, everything that I wanted to do to show you this thing in action isn't happening. Um, I would probably need to go back and... In, um, Sharda, if you could put my laptop in, please. That would be really nice. Thank you. Right. Now, I'm showing you... Just give me a minute. I'm sorry, this has to... of the way it could work. You haven't heard the voice overlay or the volume, so that makes it rather sort of faceless. Um, but essentially what I wanted to say to you, and I don't think I can even show it to you today since everything seems to be going wrong at the console, um, is the fact that it can be used in classrooms. Um, by the time they get their act together, it'll be very late and I don't want to keep you. However, I will take you through it. Um, anybody who's interested can see it off my laptop where it works perfectly. Uh, and uh, hopefully you can try it. Essentially what you're doing is bringing things to life in your classroom. And that, honestly, is all we want to do. For example, this has got stuck again in there. And it was working perfectly this morning. So please bear with me. Um, I'm going to cut this short. Ah, oh, finally. Thank you. Release to screws.
should definitely give you an idea of how many applications are possible. Um, a lot of uh, airline companies are using it for simulations. Um, why not us? Why not actually show children what's happening in the solar system around them, etc.? Could you move on with this? Or is it jammed again? Carry on, please. Right. I hope you saw that in, below the globe, there was a marker, a paper, which was actually the marker. So if you can go on to the next um, uh, uh, video, I think they'll be able to see that happen. This one, please. Uh, this is a teacher who decided to learn I how to use it in her classroom. And I think as teachers, we need to show exactly what she did. So um, with a lecture can you put it on? Ago, and I asked them to tell me about some of the new things that were going to come about in technology. I'm going to do a presentation about this kind of thing at the Kegsa conference in July. So I wanted to see what was coming up and what was going to be happening next. Amongst other things, one of the things that came up in the conversation was something called augmented reality. Um, the understanding of the person I was talking to was that you would have your document camera or your visualizer, as I like to call them, and you would put a box underneath the camera and it would turn that box into something, maybe a dancing skeleton. And I said, oh, OK, right, that sounds good, but why? Why would we want to do that? And I don't think either of us really understood what it was that we were talking about when we were talking about augmented reality. So I came back and being me, I had to find out. So I did some research and I found some really cool stuff that I know geography and history teachers are going to think is awesome. What is augmented reality? Well, in fact, I've had augmented reality on my webcam ever since I bought my new one a couple of months ago. Augmented reality is about taking what you see in front of you and then enhancing it, adding things. So for example, on this webcam, if I want to, I could turn myself into a pig. Now I'm not actually a pig, but this is augmented reality. I'm adding something to reality. You know, I could, um, I could give myself a beard or rabbit ears. Um, I could even give myself some really funky Dame Edna average glasses. These things are not actually here. I'm augmenting reality. So how can I use this to enhance education? Well, there's a company called AR Sites who have come up with something absolutely awesome. And without needing a document camera, although if I do have one, a visualizer, um, I might not be able to have some funky glasses or a cat's nose, but I can have the Eiffel Tower in the palm of my hand. That sounds cool, doesn't it? Here's the AR Sites website, and that can be found at arsites.com. On this website, you can download the application that I'm going to use today for free. You can download a marker, which you'll see me use shortly, for free. And you can download the placemarks that built themselves into Google Earth. So as you can see here, this is Google Earth. And all over the planet are these little eyes. And these eyes indicate that there's a 3D augmented model that you can use in your classroom. So you can see that all over the world there are major destinations that we can go and explore. And that's why this is really awesome. So let's have a look at how that works. There we go. So I've turned on my AR Media layer, which I downloaded from the website. The file is an AR Media KMZ, and um, I double click on that, and that will put this AR Media layer in. So now when I go to Tower Bridge in London, here we go, on our little adventure, you can see those eyes that I showed you earlier. If I want to download the 3D model, what I do is I come to the layer and expand it. 
and I pop myself down to Tower Bridge in the list. You can see the whole, there's loads of them. And I can save this model. I can save the models into a folder. So when I run AR Insights, I get to choose which of those 3D models I want to run. So I could download them all before my lessons so that they're all in my computer at any time. I wouldn't need Google Earth anymore. I will need the internet and I will need some kind of document camera or webcam. A webcam is absolutely fine and is what I'm going to be using today. So I'm going to, you have to have your webcam or your document visualizer plugged in. I'm going to browse for something that I've already downloaded and I've created a folder here in my documents called Augmented Reality. And in here I've got the Eiffel Tower and I've got Tower Bridge. Let's go to France and go to the Eiffel Tower. I click open and then I click start. Of course I've got my camera connected so I click OK and I just wait. I choose my webcam. I've got a Logitech 600 attached at the moment. And now it's downloading the content. Now what I have in front of me, which you'll see in a moment when the software starts, is a piece of paper. And this piece of paper has a box on it. Now I wasn't imagining a box like this. My oh, it's happening already. It's literally a piece of paper that the camera can pick up the symbol on the inside. And now I'm holding the Eiffel Tower. And I can turn the Eiffel Tower around as long as I keep it in contact with the camera. And we can have a good look. Is this at fantastic? This place. I mean, you've got so a virtual image on your hand. Reality. And this is what's coming next, I think. It's going to be really cool. Now, imagine if you were doing a project on the ancient Romans and you wanted to show your students 3D models of the Colosseum or any of those things over there in, uh, in Rome. Or maybe you're a French teacher living in Australia and you'd really like to show them something like this in a little bit more of a realistic way. Imagine that this was combined with a 3D projector. Could get interesting, couldn't it? But there's a whole heap of these that you can use in your teaching. Okay. Now, if this was a document camera or a visualizer, then this would be pointing down at my desk, wouldn't it? And this square would be constantly underneath it. You can so I would never have a problem. The tower where bridge I would visual as well. This, this surface you can turn check. it around, show it from all angles. And this is just some of the applications which you can use in the classroom. Can you go to the next um, slide, please? I'm actually showing you here, and you're welcome to take this down, um, a space journey, and it's very simple to do. It's a great interactive tool, and you can download the entire thing, the board and everything else, from their website. So if it's not clear from where you are, you can definitely walk over to me and get it from me later. Now, there are hundreds of companies providing interactive augmented reality material um, overseas. I'm waiting for someone to take up this challenge in India and actually do it for our own sites. Um, why are we lagging behind? Um, Finland is teaching its children code. We have the best IT brains, but unfortunately they go overseas to practice it. Um, why can't we initiate something here, a project? But I can tell you one thing, uh, once you get hooked on this, you just need one interested teacher and you will have plenty of information floating around your school. You can have softboards that are enabled. You will have independent learning going on, children going on. Now, it means you've got to change your minds about cell phones. Big problem here. Because without changing your minds, and without assuming that everybody is going to be using it for all the wrong things, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, I do know for a fact that there are many schools that ban mobile phones in the classroom for their teachers. I say never. Oh, go on, how are you documenting things when they're happening? How do you catch the aha moment if you are going to say, hang on, I have to go to the school office to get a camera? So, please, just like you have to have trust, you're going to have to trust your teachers as well. Trust that the teachers are not going to be WhatsApping all the time or on their phones talking to their friends and families. Somewhere or other, you can't throw out the baby with the bathwater, which is what happens mostly when we decide something is not being used correctly. We throw it out 
all together. So please sensitize your teachers, trust them. And I'm sure most of you have, what, CCTV?